ولاسمان و تق اللہ ان اللہ شدید القاب اینڈ کوآپریٹ ود دیم ان میٹرز آف بر وچ از مرسی کمپیشن کائنڈنیس اینڈ جسٹس اینڈ احسان اینڈ ڈو ناٹ کوآپریٹ ود دیم ود سن ڈس اوبیڈینس اینڈ میٹرز آف پروہبیٹڈ کمانڈمنٹس اینڈ فیئر اللہ صبح تعالیٰ فار انڈیڈ اللہ پنشمنٹ از ویری سویئر This commandment is for Muslims, but it's really for Muslims and non-Muslims. Generally, it is easier to work with Muslims, but please don't mind my saying that there are Muslims who do not cooperate because of either ignorance or arrogance. We are in America, which is a non-Muslim country. So how do we work with our non-Muslim fellow Americans? Well, sisters, we are American Muslims. We are proud of that. We, we were not invited here. We came on our own choice. So it is our responsibility to abide by the law and be lawful American citizen Muslims. And among one of the rules, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that we have given you this life as a trust and your property is a trust. But not for just Muslims, for all mankind, the life and property is a trust and we have to respect each other's trust. Now, safety regulations, security and traffic rules are laws of the country. So we have to make sure that we follow the safety and reg- security regulations. Now, these regulations are divine re- regulations. They are not the regulations of America, Europe. They didn't invent that or give an idea. And I'll give you the example in a minute. <clears throat> When we are driving, we should follow the traffic signs. We should not break the speed limit and we should not pass the red traffic light and stop signs. The scholar Hamza Yusuf has said, if you deliberately pass a red traffic light, make a staghfar because you have defied Allah's rule, not just broken the local law. So this is what we have to understand. And now some, you are at a stop sign and they you want to rush to go through and don't worry about the other person in front. Now, if there's somebody on the stop sign on the other side, let him go first. If you do that, that will be a sadaqah for you, a charity. Allah will reward you for that. And you will see the other person waving hands to you with thanks and appreciation. Simple things we can do to avoid Islamophobia and all kind of garbage you see in the media and everywhere else. Because Our interaction with the common man is more important than our interaction with our, our, you know, everything else. And it is our behavior and character that will put us up than anything else. Prophet ﷺ said, if somebody's deed puts him down, his uh, heritage cannot raise him up. <coughs> Let me give you an example of our own Islamic center. You know, Islamic Center in Cincinnati is on Tylersville Road and it is on Plantation Drive. It is right at the dead end of the Plantation Drive and there is neighborhood around where are Muslims and non-Muslims. The speed limit is 25, but our brothers drive at 40, 50 miles an hour on the street and not only that, they overtake each other, not caring for the children on the sidewalks or the elderly and other doing their regular chores. We are putting neighborhood in jeopardy. Now, Alhamdulillah, no serious accident happened so far. But guess what? The neighbors complained against the Islamic Center. And the city council and the police summoned our board to explain our behavior. You see, anything I do wrong is my personal wrong. But thing goes, no, the Islamic center is bad, Islam is bad. 
So everyone have to see if they are doing something wrong, it will not just be because of my, my own action. It will say it's all because of the Islamic Center or Islam itself. And you know how politicians are exploiting the situation right now. So the Islam, our board went to the city council and explained to them that yes, we respect the speed limit and we on our Juma Khutbah and another session, we keep emphasizing to our people, please stay on 25 limits of miles an hour or less and take care of the neighborhood because there are children playing and the elderly on the street. And the board said, we, we feel free to give, give them tickets if they, if they speed, over speed. We don't mind. And guess what? The police came and they ticketed three, four people for three to four hundred dollars. And guess what? The speed limit, the people got the message. Brother and sister, isn't that a shame that we are afraid of the cops more than we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Astaghfirullah. Now, why should we violate the rights of the neighbors when and endangering their lives and property? Prophet Sallallahu said, when Jibreel Sallam came to me with any revelation, he emphasized two things extensively. Number one, to use this walk as often as possible and take care of your neighbors. Neighbors, Muslims or non-Muslims. Brother and sister, it's important. He said, I was so scared by his repeat, this repetition that Allah will say, the neighbors have a, a, a right in your inheritance. We remind our fellow Muslims at the Juma Khutbah and other times to respect the neighborhood and follow the speed limit, yet people neglect this recommendation. Now, <clears throat> let me give you a couple of examples of my own experience. <clears throat> I got my last speeding ticket 30 years ago. We were driving to Florida through South Carolina and I was in the fast lane speeding. I, I wasn't sure and I was new in the country. A cop was coming from the opposite side and he followed me and he stopped me from the side and he gave me a ticket of $150. $150 in the 70s is worth, worth now $500 or more. dollars. And he said, you have to pay me now. I will not give, wait for you to send me in the mail. Pay me now or I will arrest you or take you in the jail. And the judge will decide in the afternoon what to do with you. I said, I don't have that kind of money. He said, credit card. I said, I credit card. I said, we don't have to take credit cards. He said, come to the bank with me and get the money out of the bank from your credit card and pay your fine. No, not doing anything better. We went to the bank, got the money out and paid him and he let me go. And I felt bad and everybody felt bad felt and frustrated. But then I began to think, why was I speeding? Maybe the cop was right. I was endangering myself and my family and others on the road. Suppose I've had an accident and would have killed somebody. Would I live with my conscience all my life with that? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided me. And Alhamdulillah, since then I have not had a speeding ticket. And I drive two or three miles below the speed limit. And guess what? The children my, and my behind pulling my hair and said, Dad, go fast, go fast. The road is clear. There are no cops. But I don't listen to them. So the, my son said, Mom, how come Dad drives, he drive walks faster than he drives? Anyway. That was an incident. The second incident was I was coming on Tylersville Road to get to the masjid from I-75 and a car pulled, cut me very sharp and came in front of me. I said, why did he do that? I said, hey, maybe that's a brother, brother Muslim who is going to the Juma. Well, I followed him and guess what? He was right, he was going to the Juma and he was speeding. When he went to the masjid, I found a place near where he was parked and there was still time for the prayer. So I asked, said, brother, can I have a word with you? He said, yes. He said, brother, you know, you cut me sharp. We could have had an accident. Oh, I was getting late for Juma. I would have missed Juma. I said, suppose we have had an accident. Then the police would come and he would profile both of us for two hours. And where is our Juma then? And if you had had an accident, you would have injured me in my car and yourself in the car. He said, yes, 
But where does it say in Quran? Now listen to this. Where does it say in Quran and Hadith that don't speed? Look at this. This is a part of not ignorance, but little arrogance. I said, yes, it does say in Quran. He said, tell me. He said, listen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa Allaha wa Rasul wa ulil amri minkum. Obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet and the people who have been appointed over you. And the United States Constitution tells us to follow the law of the land. So when we are in this country, we have to follow the rules of regulation. His tears came in his eyes. He gave me a hug. And he said, brother, you opened my eyes. I often do that. I will not do that again. <laughs> so Alhamdulillah, he got the message. What we don't know is we have to find out. If you read Quran and Sira, everything is mentioned there. And we have to understand the background. And really it is for our safety and security. And for, you know, to tell Islam, Islam is a religion of peace. And that we don't mean to harm anybody anywhere, road or otherwise. Now the second thing I want to emphasize in the bear is to join what is called, the association called MAD, M-A-D-D. MAD is an organization of Muslim, um, um, mothers against drunk driving. And if there are some mothers who 20 years ago who had their loved one killed by alcoholic drivers and who were driving under the influence of drugs, they formed an organization. It's a non-profit organization and they are educating people and emphasizing, please don't drive drunk. And they have saved thousands of lives. And guess what? Isn't that similar to how Islam prohibited alcohol? It, the prohibition alcohol did not come in one saying. First, first commandment was, do not pray while you're drunk. Subhanallah. Prophet saw a companion leading Salat and, and he was drunk and he was making mistakes reciting the Quran. So that was the first thing. But there was a period of detoxification for many years. Prophet emphasized taqwa. And the, and the problem with alcohol and other intoxicants. So, subhanallah, and finally it was prohibited. And the word haram was not used. Many Muslims say, where do you say in Quran, sharab is haram, alcohol is haram? No, the word used is fasta nibu, stay away from it. It's far much powerful than the word haram. The word says, I support mad. And in fact, there's one more thing. I told the mad, add another D. Mothers against drunk and distracted driving because of our cell phones. It's a shame. We use our cell phones for regular calls. If you want to make a call, go on the, on the shoulder and make a text or call or whatever you want. And if it's not an emergency, don't even answer. Why endanger your life and the life of the people on the road? You know, it's just the same thing. So if we three and three and five million Muslims join MAD, and there is no membership fee, but they take donations. If you donate five, twenty, twenty dollars, thirty dollars a year, and they get millions of dollars, they are trying to persuade the conference, the Congress, to pass a law to put a gadget in the car, so that a person who's drunk, when he starts to put in the key, he will not be able to start the car because the gadget will be able to smell alcohol on him. So they are working on that. It's a wonderful thing. So they have taken the first step. So brother and sister, let me tell you something. If three to five million Muslim Americans pour millions of dollars in MAD, it will give them an idea. Why are Muslims interested in saving American lives? You know what I am saying? If you see money talks, and when they get the money and the funds and the Congress passes regulations, then it will give them an idea. Maybe we should look at the Muslim to see why they are saving lives, why they think alcohol is bad, and why is alcohol prohibited. And who knows, one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them, they should stop, the people should stop alcohol and drugs altogether. Now let me contrast it with the regulation of prohibition. You know, about 20 years ago, Congress with a stroke of a pen said, no more alcohol. No more alcohol. Well, sure. The shops were closed. Alcohol was not manufactured or sold. Well, guess what the people do? Since they did not educate the people and there was no detoxication period, people started brewing beer and everything in their basements. So there was a lot of bootlegging in the north and 
thousands of people became billionaires because of that. And in, right in Kentucky, there was moon shining, from which people gave made a lot of money. So, brother, sister, see the difference. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He puts a commandment, He gives you, He educates you, and gives you time to understand, understand, before He makes anything haram. He makes anything haram. So, subhanahu wa ta'ala, learn the lesson from this. We have an opportunity to save American lives, Muslims and non-Muslims. We put the money, have them in their conferences, and someday they will have in their mind, why do Muslims do that? Why are they interested in American Muslim lives? And that is to counter the Islamophobia. When they will see Muslims are doing such a, a bill, this is bill and ihsan on the American people and on ourselves. The other thing I want to emphasize is our role in the political process. This is an election year. But most of our Muslim brothers have this wrong impression that why should we bother to vote in USA since this is a non-Islamic state. This is totally illogical. Brothers and sisters, we are American citizens. It is our constitutional right and constitutional duty to vote. And and this is a privilege that is not there in so many Islamic countries. Now, let's see what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. <clears throat> if you see anything happening, stop with this, stop that wrong thing with your hand, if you have the authority. Number two, if you can do that, stop it with your tongue, by expressing yourself in a polite way. And number three, if you can do that, feel is bad in your heart. And this is the least of Iman. So let's look at this hadith. Now we can't stop bad things happening in America. We have no authority or power. But and when we express, you know, we get angry instead of being polite and being illogical and rational. So at least we can vote. We can express ourselves by voting. And tell you this is this this uh, this candidate has got wrong ideas. He should not be elected, and thus we have to go register and vote. So every any everybody who's 18 and above, man or woman, must register and must vote. Now let me <coughs> tell you something about democracy. Democracy is nothing to do with the West or anything. Islam is right. the, when I prove it to you. Normally what happened, when a prophet came, he completed his mission. When he passed away, his son became the next prophet, right? Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ishaq alayhi salam, Yaqub alayhi salam, Yusuf alayhi salam, Dawud etc. etc. all the way to Now Prophet alayhi salam was on the other side of his, from Ismail alayhi salam. He did have two kids, but they both died in infancy. And that was perhaps the hint that prophets will not be the, he'll be the last prophet and no prophet will come and the people have to go on their own to take care of the Islam. And that's exactly what happened. When Prophet was, was passed away, <coughs> a meeting was held in Medina in a city council between Mahajirin and Ansar. And they were decided that they should appoint an Ansar to be a Khalifa. But Abu Bakr and Umar ta'ala anhu were there as well, and they were some other Mahajirins. So Umar ta'ala explained to look, Ansars were wonderful. He, he exalted Ansars because they helped the Mahajirin to settle down in Medina. But he said the sacrifices of the Mahajirin was much greater. They were prosecuted. They were pushed out of their houses. They were killed. So they have, uh, Mahaji should be the Khalifa. With some discussion, he nominated Abu Bakr ta'ala anhu as the first Khalifa. And it was accepted. So number one, nomination. Number two, there were discussion about who to be the Khalifa. Abu Bakr went to Umar, he went to Usman ta'ala anhu, Ali ta'ala anhu, Ibn ta'ala and others. He said, you be the Khalifa. But they said, no, Abu Bakr, you are the best person to be the Khalifa. So nomination discussion, primary, secondary. Now, election. Three days in Medina after Fajr prayer, Abu Bakr said, O oh people, I have been nominated to be your Khalifa. 
Do you accept me as your Khalifa? Do you give me your bayah for three consecutive days and everybody 100% yes, we want you to be our Khalifa. That was the bayah. That was the vote. So it was Islamic. It was the Islam who started this process of democracy. See, primary, secondary, and election and acceptance. So subhanallah, and alhamdulillah, we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guided us 1400 years ago to follow the right thing. And then democracy has spread. And the West is proud of that, but really they are practicing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad has taught us in, in 1400 years ago. So therefore it's very important. <coughs> So all, everybody, should, everybody should register and vote. Now, if you do not have the information about the candidates, talk to your Islamic center. There are people here who know about the politicians. And we should respect all the politicians of all parties, so Republican, Democrat, Independent, whatever. Because whoever wins, we have to work with them, with cooperation, with the politeness, with compassion to achieve justice and harmony for not only for us, but for all the people in America, plus our behavior, and if you get the right candidate, will change and will shape the foreign policy of America towards Muslim countries, so they can, they can live in peace and not have the chaos right now that we have. So number one, our, our expectations, our knowledge, and our behavior and service to America. That will stop Islamophobia. And not, all the, not anything else that all the voices and all the things we say in the massages and here, here and there. So brothers and sisters, remember, your service to America, your behavior and your character will achieve more than your words and everything else. Now, <clears throat> Well, look at this. We right now have President Obama as our president. He has opened the door for everyone else. Now we have two Muslim senators. One is Keith Allison somewhere in Massachusetts and there's another some like Mr. Shaw in Indiana. But don't be surprised if you, your grandchildren or will be a senator, a congressman, a Supreme Court justice and even a president in the White House is coming. But we have to prepare for it. We have to spend time on it, understand it, educate ourselves, and prove ourselves worthy to be the leader in the United States at all levels, in all walks of life. 